Well, the holidays have come early as Google have just dropped the gift we've all been waiting for. Shockingly, not Nano Banana 2, but rather Nano Banana Pro. So I've had the chance to kick around with the model for a few days in advance. So we're gonna take a look at where it's really shining, where it's a little mushy and all of the places that you can access it. But not only that, I had the chance to talk directly to someone at DeepMind on the Banana team. And I've got some insights into the model and some information that, well, you're not gonna hear anywhere else. All right, let's get this video on the road and peel out. So hot on the heels of the release of Gemini 3, Nano Banana Pro has dropped. For all intents, it is basically Nano Banana 2, not ketchup. I, I do have an answer to that coming up in a little bit. It is, of course, actually named Gempix 2, but nobody actually calls it that. Uh, and, you know, it's a image model powered by Gemini 3. Now, that Gemini 3 part is actually a very important aspect for it, well, generation and editing, as it's, it's basically an image model that thinks. Now, as mentioned, I did have early access to this model, but it was only through Gemini. Nano Banana Pro is now in wide release, and of course, will be available for access in AI Studio, uh, the new anti-gravity in Flow, and of course via API, basically meaning it's going to be everywhere. So kicking off with our wine glass and analog clock test that we ran in the last video. Uh, yeah, as we can see here, uh, Banana Pro is perfectly capable of filling your wine glass all the way to the top. I did change the time to uh, 2.55, only because 11.15, it's a little early to be drinking that much wine. Keeping on with our standardized test, of course, Banana Pro can easily handle the old SVG test of a Pelican riding a bike, which of course now leads me to my ultimate benchmark test of a Pelican riding riding a bike, drinking a full glass of wine at 2.55 p.m. while wearing a VR headset. That last one is for you, Black Forest Labs. We can now also do things in different aspect ratios, you know, all the standard 16, 9, 2, 1, uh, 4, 3. But what's kind of fun is that you can get a little wacky with it like this, you know, cinematic Western scene, which has done an aspect ratio of 7-2. We can also take advantage of the new aspect ratios for outpainting, uh, for example, taking channel fan favorite Flamethrower Girl, and then asking Banana Pro to change the aspect ratio, actually to kind of a weird one of 141. Uh, we ended up with this, which does look pretty good. It does get a little bit wacky with the flamethrower there, but you know, I'm, an, I'm not gonna tell her, she's the one with the flamethrower. So in terms of straight image generation, Banana Pro has gotten a bit better. To be honest, I've never been like super blown away by Nano Banana as a straight image generator. Although that's not to say that it doesn't have some very key strengths in some very important places. One of which being in style transfer. I don't know if you guys saw, but a couple of days ago, there were some images uh, from the upcoming Legend of Zelda live action adaptation. So of course I couldn't resist seeing if we couldn't take the live action version of it and turn it back into the video game. And yeah, I mean, this ends up looking pretty good. It even actually, you know, pulls in some UI elements, which is uh, pretty interesting. Now I do have to admit it sometimes does struggle with giving you an exact replica of the image that you were looking for. Uh, for example, taking this shot, um, I ended up with this uh, as an output, which, you know, it clearly understands what I'm looking for. It just doesn't give me the exact pose that they were in. Now that might have something to do with the fact that I was testing in Gemini, where uh, we do know that's a lot of times like, you know, the as the conversation goes on, the context gets a little jangled. Uh, for example, in that earlier example with the super wide angle Western aspect ratio, I was trying to get that to retexture using a screenshot from uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. And what it came back with was just a straight up disaster, namely in that our drunk bike riding Pelican uh, stumbled into the context of that request and what we ended up with this i'm gonna call it a piece of art honestly i'm gonna call that art that said occasionally the context jumbling actually ends up with something kind of cool like when i was trying to generate up a surrealist image and uh like flamethrower girl ended up in there that was kind of neat we'll talk more about that in a little bit but look some places that i think that uh nano banana pro really does fly is with things like taking an image of a location and saying like, show me the opposite side of the room. That is something that I think is very handy for creating essentially virtual sets that uh, you can then populate and then bring into something like VO3. Because once we have our location established, we can bring in, well, this is an older character actually, uh, I think generated up in runways frames and we can bring her into the location, in this case, drinking a glass of wine. It's a lot of wine in this video. Or in the next shot, have her walk over and now sitting at the bar. Something like this might work really well for a first frame, last frame. But really to me, the biggest win in Nano Banana Pro is that we can take, say, a location like this, uh, two characters like this, and then of course, you know, we could 
populate them within the scene. From there, of course, we could move into close-ups of each character. Nothing new there. What is new is that we can now move our camera to the opposite side of the room and essentially see you know, the view from behind our characters in the initial shot. Uh, it does even end up breaking the 180 rule, which is correct. Uh, in our first image, of course, our male character is on the right. And, uh, you know, once we we move to the opposite side of the room, our male character is on the left. I'm sure most of you have run into this issue. Like, Take, for example, uh, not Lara Croft. This is funny enough. This is actually a VO2 screenshot. Um, but anyhow, if you were to try to move the camera behind her, what you would typically end up with is the exact same background, only like her character would be essentially like paper doll flipped around. But well, we can now actually get this shot with a continuation of our background. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about like how all of this works uh, in my segment when we talk to DeepMind later in the video. Now I gotta say that one place that Banana Pro really blew me away is in its handling of text. Um, and then you combine that with essentially its ability to generate art. And well, I mean, essentially you've got a comic book. So I took a random page from a comic book that I wrote and actually even released. It's linked down below if you wanna check it out. Um, but yeah, I fed that into uh, Banana Pro and basically said, you know, generate a comic book in an aspect ratio of two, three, and this is what it came out with. And I gotta say, that is pretty impressive. All the lettering and ballooning is actually in its correct spot. Uh, and all of the details are there as well. Um, if you wanna see how close, this is the actual produced page. So yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, and again, just based off of the script. Now, I will point out there are some minor issues here, namely in that in each of the word balloons, it would tend to put the character name in uh, along with the balloon. Uh, you know, that's probably the model reading, you know, the script and basically taking uh, the character dialogue lines and putting the uh, the attribute before it. Um, but I do have to point out that uh, like on its own, the model put in a handwritten letter from the Joker uh, that says two henchmen eek, thanks for the muscle. Um, that's really funny. That was not in the script rounding out with multi-image referencing. Um, you know, to be honest, I really feel that your best bet here a lot of times is to kind of combine your reference images into one reference. The model can handle up to six references at a time, but I, I do find that the more you provide it, the more it tends to break down. So generally, I think that this is usually the way to go. Uh, I am sorry, I don't know who actually generated this up. I, I actually downloaded it and forgot to bookmark it to see, to give credit. So uh, whoever it is, uh, thank you for this. But overall, I do have to say that when you utilize this method, you tend to get better results. So overall, very early impressions of Banana Pro. I mean, it has its pros and its cons, but we're also still super early into this model. And although Google says there's no difference between utilizing Banana Pro on Gemini versus using it on like Flow or via API, I mean, I tend to think that there is. So I'll definitely be spending some more time with it, figuring out, you know, where the best place to use it is and, you know, the spots that it really shines. In the meantime, let's go head over to DeepMind to have a chat about how Nano Banana works, uh, how it kind of integrates in with VO3 and even Gemini 3, and kind of most importantly, what the future of Nano Banana holds. Uh, but first, a quick word from today's sponsor. You know the old productivity advice that says the best habit is the one you actually stick with? Obviously that is true, but I think with a lot of us, we end up spending a lot of time looking for that perfect system and not a lot of time building the habit. It does open up the door to a pretty interesting idea. What if the best system isn't the one you download, but one you build yourself and in seconds? And that brings us to Vibe Code, who I am happy to partner with for today's video. So one habit I really want to improve is reading more, you know, actual books. So I thought it'd be an interesting idea to create an AI app that would essentially you know, track my reading progress. Uh, the question is, can I build this app right here, right now? And the answer, of course, to that is yes. Vibe Coach allows anyone to build real mobile apps and publish on the App Store without writing a single line of code. And you can do it right on your phone, which is great for capturing lightning in a bottle when inspiration strikes. Now back to my book tracker. It's really cool because it is very simple to implement new ideas into your app. For example, uh, suggested reading there, that was something that I just simply prompted in. Uh, to do that, 
All you have to do is pinch to build and that will open up a CapCut style menu right on your phone. So for example, if I want that suggested reading section to be below my currently reading section, uh, simply ask it. You can actually prompt this via voice as well. Now, what I love about this is that it is so easy to use. Obviously, vibe coding is all about getting things built using natural language. And to that, this isn't running some second rate AI model. This is running on Claude Code, the most powerful coding model in the world. Another thing that I really love Love about this is essentially the power in personalization or customization here. Uh, for example, like even just coming down here and hitting our audio tab, that will allow us to either upload audio or generate sound effects, music, or voice for our app. So while I'm reading the Maltese Falcon, if I want the ambiance of a jazzy piano trio playing in some smoky nightclub, well, I mean, I can just implement that. Or if I want to feel a sense of accomplishment every time I finish a chapter, I can add in the haptics here and uh, drop a heavy impact so that my phone vibrates every time I log my progress. Now, while my book app is a little individualized to me, if you did build something that you wanted to ship, well, uh, you know, getting things live on the App Store used to be a nightmare. Thankfully, not anymore you can actually just ship right to the app store with almost no friction. You do need to sign in with an Apple developer account, but then you just push one button on your phone and the app will ship to the app store. That is a process that used to take weeks of setup and now it's done in seconds. Additionally, if you enable Vibecode Cloud, your entire library database will be synced across all devices. If you wanna give Vibecode a shot, and I do recommend doing so, uh, hit the link down in the description and go build something that solves a problem for you. Tag me when you ship it. As always, a big thanks to Vibecode for sponsoring today's video. So earlier today, it has been a very long day. Uh, Google reached out and they were like, hey, do you want to talk to anybody over at DeepMind about Nano Banana?" And I was like, yes, I absolutely do. So they were kind enough to set me up with a call with Nicole Brichtova, uh, who leads product for image and video over at DeepMind. It's like, well, Nano Banana, basically. We chatted for about a half an hour. The interview has been significantly cut down because oh, basically you don't want to hear me fanboy for like 23 minutes. So we'll kick off in progress where I'd asked her a bit about the thinking model and, you know, what sort of ended up surprising her about this pro update. Yeah, so I think one of the most exciting things about this model is the ability to sort of visualize information and knowledge, which um, is, is powered by a couple of different capabilities. One is you've probably noticed that text rendering has just gotten so much better, like, like, like leaps and bounds better than where we've been before. And I think generally, and you sort of mentioned this, like the model's ability to reason and kind of even think about like when you're making an infographic, right? Like what goes in it? What should be the text? What should be the visuals? Like how is it laid out? Um, do the colors make sense? Like I, I've been really kind of impressed by the sort of next level um, of visualizing information that we weren't able to do before. The other big thing that I noticed is that how good it is at... Um, uh, at understanding 3D space. Does the model now have uh, an internal concept of 3D space? Like we benefit a lot from just the leapfrog in general multimodal understanding that Gemini 3 has. And, and if you look at like Gemini 3 versus 2.5, like multimodal understanding is a giant leap. Um, and especially when you go from 2.5 flash, which is what Nano Banana was based on, to now 3 Pro, like it, it's, it's just kind of leaps and bounds. And it does help with the generation side of the thing. So, so I think a lot of what you were seeing is actually this nice kind of marriage between understanding and generation now being combined by Gemini into basically the same model. From uh, our standpoint, on let's sort of be outside looking in at uh, all of the kind of insane things that DeepMind has been releasing uh, recently. Like uh, we tend to think of things as like, um, it's like we have Nano Banana Pro, VO 3.1, and then of course Genie 3. There's like this idea of like, well, why don't they just plug all three of these things together? Is there a relation at all between the architectures and or is there a long-term plan to eventually kind of bring these, like the three modalities together? Yeah, it's a good question. So in general, our goal with Gemini has always been for it to be the model that does every modality in and every modality out, right? Um, and, you know, to your point, it's actually really hard to do because with something like Genie, um, you really want things to be real time, right? Because like, otherwise it's really hard to navigate a world if it's not real time. Versus if you're um, generating really cinematic videos, like that that doesn't need to be real time. Um, and if you're making images, then you probably want it to be more cost effective than generating video. There's kind of these like, hard practical constraints that mean that 
while we work towards having a single model that like does it all, any modality and any modality out, um, we get these models that are really, really helpful and useful for a specific task like image generation, image editing, video generation, like world simulation. Um, and that, you know, the goal is ultimately to kind of like bring all these things together. I think the question is like how long it takes. Um, and obviously, like while we go there, we still have a lot of headroom to improve all all three of these things, right? I think if we had this conversation a year ago about image generation, we we like we wouldn't even be talking about visualizing information or like rendering text in multiple languages and like getting this kind of high fidelity that we're getting from these models now. Um, and you can imagine that we should be doing the same thing with video, you know, for some of these use cases. So uh, so I think I, I think it's kind of like the journey there. But yes, the goal is ultimately to have like a single model that does it all. Oh, well, by the way, was Ketchup an actual like uh, was that what, what was I, I don't know. I don't know what happened with Ketchup. Ketchup, ketchup was like not a real thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad you I was very um, concerned about this, like that that the name change was going to happen. And I was uh, at least I was to fight for nano tomato you know, as we move into the next iteration um do you see like the user interface evolving will it still continue to be text-based do you see like essentially our um our ability to manipulate and interface with the images like changing like becoming direct spatial maybe real time i don't know like yeah how do you how do you see all of that um i think there's a lot of headroom in thinking about interfaces in general um so for, for some things obviously prompting is actually the easiest way to go for some things Probably voice is a little bit of an underappreciated modality, I think, in terms of being able to interact with these models. I think doodling is kind of an early glimpse into what that could look like. And so I do expect that like, at some point there's going to be an evolution in that. And you'll probably still have the like chatbot interface for just like very quick creation um, and then move on to other tools that, you, you know, are maybe more involved in terms of what the what the interface looks like. I don't know exactly what it looks like. I don't know if anyone's really cracked it at this point. Probably not nodes. I can tell you that. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of very passionate people um, on, both and that, on, on both sides of that debate. Um, I, they're really, really useful and offer you such extreme controllability. Like the on ramp is serious. Like <laughs> it, it's not an easy thing to learn. So when do you, when do you think the problem of consistency is actually cracked? Will it be in this generation? Do you think? I know. It's, I, I don't think it's fully cracked in this generation. If you're talking about character consistency, it gets a lot better in this generation. Like it, it was a pretty awesome leap in 2.5 Flash or Nano Banana. Um, it's it's better here in the sense that we can now support you know five, up to five characters with like a good amount of consistency. It's not it's not perfect. It's not perfect across everyone. But I, I think we still have a lot of headroom to go. The last question that is kind of more on the esoteric side, like what do you consider to be the north star of Nano Banana? If you look at the world around us, um, it's full of visuals. Like if you read a newspaper, if you read a textbook, if you look at a magazine, like like there's always text and visuals, right? Um, and for that to be the case, um, factuality and grounding and kind of relevance to the text has to get really, really good. You should be able to kind of learn anything um, using visuals that are kind of customized to you, right? Whether that's like an image or a video, depending on how you best learn or what the topic is. Um, you shouldn't just be kind of confined to what already exists. Like you should be able to kind of visualize any piece of information. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that kind of as a general direction. And it, it, it feels like we're kind of starting to see glimpses of that being possible. And we're back. Thank you very much to Nicole for your time. And thank you to Google for, you know, setting up our chat. I'll say this has been quite the Google takeover of the channel this week. Uh, I'm going to go look around, see what else is happening in the AI world. Uh, and I'm sure I will see you again very soon. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.